Hey everyone, today we're going to go over how to make a altered carb vase hand built. So this is my example one. I made this a long time ago in North Carolina and I just love this like dark clay body. But I'm going to show you how to make it in uh, porcelain or whatever clay you have on hand. So this is going to be a combination of a pinch pot with added coils. So the things you'll need are obviously clay. You'll want some kind of paddle, or in this case, I'm just using a regular wooden kitchen spoon. I used a regular spoon for some smoothing, and I have a carving tool that is optional. So really basic tools today. First thing that you're gonna do is get a chunk of clay that's all wedged up and is a pretty good size for the start of our pinching base. I usually will go with my thumb first and just kind of slowly dig down and rotate to form my base. And then I'm taking the pads of my fingertips and inching along. I want to outline the thinness of my base first so that I don't have too thick of a base and then kind of widen it out. Once I have a start to my pinch pot, I'm going to push it down onto the table and build more of a base. I'm trying to maintain an even thickness along the base. I'm not so much worried about the top right now. Of course, I don't want it to be super thick so it might slump on to the very bottom and then I'm gonna just kind of lightly tap that bottom part. So now that I have my base established I'm gonna build up my walls a little bit higher and then coil on top of those to bring it in. So when I'm pinching to bring it out my two hands are going to go like this kind of angled at a 45 degree angle. To bring it in they're going to be pinching towards each other. So I know it's hard to see, so that's pinching towards each other, and that's pinching away. So basically, as my hands are angled out, it's going to go out if they're angled and pinching the clay in towards each other, it's going to go in. And the fun part about this form is that I can be super organic with it. I don't have to make like a straight form or a perfect cup. Kind of the more funky it is in shape, the more fun it'll be at the end. Just make sure you're trying your best to have an even thickness in your walls. So I'm kind of angling it. And you do want to keep your base a little bit thicker, especially with this form. If I'm gonna use it as a proper bud base, I don't want my bottom to be too thin because then it could get um, toppled over if I have like a heavier arrangement. And I like really like fluffy pom-pom arrangements. So ideally I wanna have my base be a little bit more supported. If you're planning on carving it, feel free to make it a little bit thicker than you would want, accounting for how much you want to carve away. So at this point, it should look kind of like this, just a few inches tall, if anything. I'm going to make this kind of curvature end by just making an imprint with my thumbs to have it kind of curve that way. And again, here I'm just kind of swooping, swooping, and smoothing out my base a little bit. So it has these kind of points that are operating like feet. Once I have that form, I'm going to make some coils. So I can just take a smaller chunk of clay, squeeze it out into a long rod, and then to coil, you're going to go back and forth, starting from the middle. I kind of flange out my fingertips, and then I'm moving outward to make that a nice round long coil. 
If you've ever wondered why your coils might get flat, it's probably from not flanging your fingertips and then they kind of flatten out. Okay, so I'm going to chop this and then I'm going to start building from the top. So I want this to go in a little bit, so I'm just going to place this coil just a little bit in and then pinch up to get it situated. Because this is wet on wet clay, it does not need to be slipped and scored. And then I'm just gonna keep going, building up as tall as I want it. And you can see I'm kind of curving my fingers, rotating them in to make it smaller as I'm approaching getting taller. So that will give it that bud vase form. Again, I'm not being super particular because I like the variety of the organic shape. If I want to start to bring this in more, I'm going to do that pinching in method to make it kind of close the gap and get that top rim situated. So again, I'm just building and then going back in kind of that same style, kind of pinching along to make sure that I don't have any super thin or thick parts. And kind of mold it in and do whatever I want shape-wise with it. From here, I'm gonna do a little bit of paddling to flatten that out. So make sure you can get in still and brace the side and then you'll just kind of slap it lightly. This helps compress the clay particles, really locking them in. And if you wanna be really particular afterwards, you can kind of take a spoon and do some smoothing. The clay is really wet right now and honestly, I really like the texture that's coming out of this and that would be really fun to have it glaze that way. This also helps create the kind of dramatic shaping that I have on this one where it has this like nice dramatic shift of form. So again, just working my way, paddling, and then going with my spoon, doing all those kind of finishing moves. Just make sure you clean your spoon every once in a while. Like right there, you kind of made this gouge from a dried piece of clay getting stuck on it. And then make sure that after you've done all your smoothing that you'll in fact clean up your base too. So I just use my finger for that and I'm just kind of lightly petting it on the parts where it got a little bit clunky or gunky. So at this point, now that I've done some of my smoothing, I'm just gonna let it firm up. So you would do that until all of the sides are covered and generally smoothed out. And again, it's aesthetic choice, however much you want to have those pinches be on and the part of the surface is totally great. A lot of hand-built ceramicists love that texture because it's really satisfying and it shows the maker's mark on it. If you are more of like, I want to smooth it out and make it polished, you can spend as much time as you want on that. I do recommend going one round while it's wet, maybe waiting an hour or two, going back with just your fingers to smooth out and then getting it again when it's pretty leather hard because it will just feel like you're fussing around forever working with just wet clay. So now that I have my piece almost leather hard. That's where I'd come back and do my carving if I want. So I have this great loopy tool. You can use any kind of trimming tool or knife or whatever. I would maybe use a scrap of clay to kind of test your carving marks and find which one you like the best. This is one of my favorite tools. It's a Kemper tool and it has a nice rounded wire so it's less likely to snag. Once I have it firm enough, then depending on just what I'm looking for, I can go along and make these kind of curved marks. So 
you can note that like right now there are tiny little inconsistencies on the clay. That doesn't matter because I'm just going to go back and carve those out. So I don't need to be fussing about that. And I like to change the direction because depending on the glaze that I'm using, it might pool in different areas and the glaze might move across the clay depending on these carved paths that I make for it. So it would allow yourself to try some different things totally okay too to leave it in its non-carb form but I especially like how the glaze on this one really showed some of those grooves and some variation along the way that I carved. So hope you had fun with this little activity today. This is one of my favorite pieces from a while back that I've hand built. And it's a fun way to really allow yourself to open up the possibilities of organic forms. So hope that's helpful and I hope that you are happy and healthy. Have a great rest of your night. Thanks for watching.